everybody, it's Tyler here with members of the FTC EveryBot team. This has been an incredible journey that hopefully you'll be able to catch and watch some of their awesome documented progress that they've had on here. We're going to be doing an awesome breakdown of this robot, talking about some of the design philosophy. Take a look at this awesome clamshell design on here, and of course the uh, tape measure that they're using as well. But there's so much to break down with this, so let's dive a bit more into what this robot's offering and how they're impacting the community. Coming up here on Behind the Bot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The new Robit system by Anymark can reduce complexity and enable robust builds. Parts align to a common one half inch grid, simplifying construction and allowing alignment of both structure and motion components. Robits enables teams to always have the parts they need to complete a build. Head on over to Anymark.com slash Robits to learn more in order today. Go ad free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad-free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the join button below to get started. So Elizabeth, let's talk about the design philosophy for the FTC Everybody. I'm just curious here, like why even design this in the first place? And let's break down a bit more about it. So one of our main goals with designing the FTC Everybot uh, was to stick to our three goals for uh, our EveryBot programs, which is to design a elegant, competitive, and affordable robot. So um, most of the parts on this robot, as you can see, are 3D printed, making them accessible for teams who, um, as, as long as they have a 3D printer. And a lot of our parts that are not 3D printed or these parts from uh, suppliers are things that you can get at any hardware store, So such as our drawer slides and um, our measuring tape here that we use for our extension. So looking at you know something like this, what have been some of the results that you've seen so far out of uh, creating this? Where you know Have you seen uh, other teams starting to uh, replicate or implement or take inspiration from it? Especially on Open Alliance and on Chief Delphi, we've seen a couple of teams um, trying to implement this and be incredibly, incredibly successful. Um, we've seen some teams who have been to tournaments where they're uh, were uh, they were the only teams who could score on the specimen or on the chamber. But I think, you know, looking at, I think one of the things too is that you're enabling a team to create and compete and how important that is for some teams who might not even know where to start for stuff as well too, right? So yeah. we've seen, you know, every bot's been around a long time for the FRC community for it, but FTC, this is a bit newer. So what is your objective overall? Like where do you want FTC every bot to be in the next couple of years? Yeah, so um, FTC EveryBot, I mean, the ideal goal is to um, not have to do this, really. The ideal goal is to where um, a, either a kit bot is implemented or we spur on enough uh, innovation in this kind of uh, field to not really need to make an EveryBot. But um, as far as we are now, we're, our goal is to just um, provide uh, a basic robot that teams can make and perform well with. Um, and just have a good time, have an enjoyable experience with robotics. Um, which, um, I mean, if you, uh, if you have a broken mechanism or uh, something that doesn't work, you might not have uh, as good of an experience. Jackie, let's try to break down what some of this robot looks like here. I mean, this clamshell design that you've came up with, I mean, talk about being very accessible for teams to create on there, very functional and durable as well too. So tell me a bit more about the inspiration behind it and let's break down what it actually is. Yeah, so uh, I guess like we wanted to create something that does not require accurate cuts on the aluminum. So all of the stuff is cut with a, a hand, uh, just handsaw. So, uh, all the alignments don't need to be, like the faces don't need to be per perpendicular. And also all of the plastic 3D printed parts uh, require no supports as well. So we've implemented a lot of tricks like teardrops uh, for holes and things like chamfers instead of fillets and a ton of tricks to uh, make the print printing process as easy as possible. And we can also like change this diameter here to adopt many different styles of tubing as well. And uh, Overall, it is modular as well because teams can choose to expand and if they decide not to build the rest of the robot, they can also use this uh, modular setup to build any chassis and it also adapts different motors from the market uh, with zip ties, mounted with zip ties and bolts. Um, and another cool feature is um, it's actually mirrored. Um, so teams can download one file, mirror it in their slicer and then have, they're just ready to go. And um, 
yeah so the reason they're through holes as well i've seen a lot of questions online asking us why we don't use uh, heat set inserts or have hex built in so you don't have to have a wrench on it uh, the idea is that you can use multiple types of bolts as well so here we're using 632 um, it also works with M4 and M3 um, and 440 as well. So we're just trying to trying to make sure everyone has access to, you know, uh, some type of bolt that can that can work with this system. Every bot's for everybody, right? Yeah. So yeah, for th that's really cool. And I, just some of that thought process you've gone through with that, like not needing supports, like how crucial really that is, like to getting teams to create, it, especially the first time. I love just all the thought process that's gone into that. Speaking of which, as well too, something we see in FRC a lot, but not FTC so much, are these uh, hearing bone. Uh, gears as well too. So talk to me more about uh, that implementation uh, and maybe how it can be utilized for FTC teams. Yeah, so a lot of people had a lot of concerns about the uh, structural integrity of the hearing bone and like the difficulty of printing them. So as you can see, we added these brims here so that the first layer is actually just perfect round. So that, that's going to be easier for some of the printers with a uh, little worse bed adhesion as well. And hearing bone has an advantage of always centering itself and it's only, it's, it's, it's really difficult to machine, so um, it's pretty much only achievable with 3D printing. And uh, and people had a lot of like concerns about like the durability of this, and we have not seen uh, field failures yet. Um, and we have like gone through a lot of like iterations of this gear to make it more durable as well. And uh, so far, we've had pretty good experience with it and uh, it is an easy part to replace as well. Another thing that really stands out on this robot too, I think is the tape measure on this Elizabeth. So talk to me more about uh, why even use a tape measure in the first place? Are there advantages to it? And then at some point, if we can see uh, how that slide works, let's bring in a sample and take a look at the intake. So when we were thinking of how we wanted to be able to extend our arm, uh, the first thing we decided on is that we wanted to use drawer slides for their um, accessibility, uh, since you can get them at pretty much any hardware store. While we were looking at different ways to uh, actually get the drawer slides themselves to extend, we started uh, experimenting with some tape measures since, again, it's something that you can get at pretty much any hardware store. It's something that we had a lot of. Uh, so the way it works is these uh, compliant wheels push it out. And the reason we kind of went with these compliant wheels instead of like Colson's or something like that is because the center where it is not there's no like plastic insert or anything like that, kind of acts as a built-in clutch. So an issue we ran into a lot was um, when it would overextend, the tape measure would keep going and you wouldn't be able to retract it. And so that built-in clutch kind of prevents it from ever kinking up like that and um, uh, taking the arm out of commission for the rest of the match. And Milo, I have to admit, like one of the more I think complex looking things on this is that intake uh, that you have too. So can you break down uh, how that is, and you know how does that intake still adhere to the Everybot philosophy as well? Yeah, absolutely. So the intake might be um, one of the most dense or most iterated parts of this robot. Um, it's a roller claw kind of taken inspiration from either Change Up or uh, the Robonauts 2015 robot, Empire. So it's two free-floating pinchers, kind of, with a elastic between them and two compliant wheels to where uh, a game object goes in and it just auto-corrects. Um, a, a big part of this thought process for during the prototyping phase was how can we make this intake as easy to use for new drivers as possible? So um, having that auto orientation in that intake design is crucial. Um, uh, also kind of going off that with the early sketches and architecture work we did, um, it, it was just uh, the optimal kind of uh, positioning or intake design that we had uh, prototyped for the kind of one arm extension architecture. And I think one of the most maybe Robonauts-esque features on this is your climber that you have on here. It really stands on that. Can we demonstrate how the climber works and maybe uh, talk me a bit, talk me through it a bit more? Yeah, absolutely. So we'll get down on the field and turn the robot on. But so the climber is kind of a very simplistic uh, hook, but. Um, it's very easy to add. There are only three screws and uh, a very simplistic, non-likely to fail 3D print. You just go back up and then you put the arm down and it'll climb by itself. So 
Um, that that will change slightly. We have a adjustability assumed for the wheels, which will change height and some other parts that will vary. But other than that, they're, um, the climber hooks are easy to adjust and um, they're very easy for new teams to just implement or even leave off of their robot if they needed to, to get ready for a comp. Well, FTC Robot, thank you so much for taking time to tell us more about this awesome design. Uh, the inspiration that you've been putting into the community for this is amazing. Uh, so we hope more teams take notice as well, too. And uh, thanks a lot. We hope you keep doing this throughout future years and keep up the great documentation. Appreciate it. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The new Robit system by Anymark can reduce complexity and enable robust builds. Parts align to a common one half inch grid, simplifying construction and allowing alignment of both structure and motion components. Robits enables teams to always have the parts they need to complete a build. Head on over to Anymark.com slash Robits to learn more and order today. Go ad free and access our videos earlier when you support fun with a membership through YouTube Join. For $4.99 a month USD, you can now watch most of our YouTube videos ad-free and gain early access to scheduled content with other options also available. Click the join button below to get started.